Dieses Video wird Ihnen präsentiert von Alienware mit Intel Core i7 Prozessoren. Hello my friends and welcome your pony of here back from Dreamhack Leipzig still looking a bit let's say trashed I think that's like the word that pretty much fits it and we're going to show you today my setup my whole streaming setup so we're going to throw a look at it and then we actually talk about what's in every PC, why five displays, wait, five displays, you're going to see in a second, and what kind of hardware software I'm using to get everything together. So like a wrap up of our whole setup there, featuring also the PC I get sent from Aeonware that is now inbound in my setup, which allows me to finally have a PC that's just for gaming. That's something I didn't have actually for like the last 15 years. I mean, as a kid, you had like a PC for gaming, right? But since I started streaming, I never had a PC that's just for gaming. So take a look at my setup and then we have like some nice talk about it. So all in all, how does this setup work? We have five displays and three PCs in total that interact with each other. We have a gaming PC that creates the gaming footage. Then there is the streaming PC, which captures what the gaming PC kind of puts out. And then last but not least, we actually have a video editing PC that is really just there to get some YouTube videos done, those vlogs we're doing here. And that's like just a bonus source for data storage. More or less, all my backs backups are in there, all my graphics are in there. Like everything is kind of getting uh, created on that PC and then kind of thrown on the gaming or the streaming PC, wherever I do needed that in the end. Let's start with a gaming PC from Alienware. That is like my newest addition to the whole setup. I actually had like my video editing on my gaming PC used to be the same, but now we have this beast machine that Alienware has put on my desk. It has an i7-6700 processor with a 3.4 gigahertz. I haven't like thought about overclocking it right now because it actually plays everything good enough. Together with the 1080 Founders Edition in there, um, it's kind of perfect. You can play everything. You even can play Overwatch on those 1414p displays I have. And that is like kind of insane because my other PC, my old gaming PC, kind of like when you put everything on Epic and Ultra and Super High, kind of was going down. So that is like absolutely cool, like new update. There's 16 gigahertz of RAM in and definitely one SSD because I tend to put like my main games on the SSD. So they just go a little bit faster than they would on the HD. Maybe it's just like, you know, split seconds. But when you're streaming, you kind of don't want to get stuck in a loading screen. Because that's like, oh yeah, guys, uh, we would like to play the game, but... Whew. Loading screen. So that is terribly awful. And no one like wants to be in there. Then at the second most important piece of the setup, or the most important piece of the setup, is my streaming PC which in the end goes over a capture card, captures the picture from the gaming PC. I'll tell you later what I have there for hardware. And then like throws the whole stuff in the internet. What is like what you want to have or what is the one important thing in a streaming PC? Super beast CPU. So you got to have something like at least an i7-4790K. That's pretty good. An i7-6700 is decent. Um, I have a Extreme Edition, the 6950, so the 10-core beast CPU. This is an extremely awesome one that allows you to kind of go for super slow preset, slow preset, even when you're streaming 1080p, 60fps. So that is really brilliant uh, for just like insane quality. For okay quality, which is like most streamers actually have, like the 6700 or the 4790K is absolutely enough. Then there's also 16 gigabyte of RAM in and a 970 from GDX. 
which is enough. Like the GeForce 970 is absolutely enough. I had like a 770 before in, and it worked like a charm. So there's absolutely the, the streaming PC is like, yeah, mostly just beast CPU and the rest is absolutely kind of standard things because you don't like, like it's just enough, you know? You, you need the big one and the rest needs to be okay to kind of throw the thing in the internet. Good would also be to have a water cooling. I'm running like one of those Corsair one. Uh, it's the i105, I think. Um, it's like those closed water cooling system. They don't cost a lot and they actually bring down some immense cooling value. But keep in mind that your um, case should be big enough to kind of fit that in, right? And in the end, we're having the video editing PC. It has a 1080 GTX also in only an i7-4790K, but most of the rendering I'm actually letting run over the GPU because you can kind of do that in Adobe Premiere and that helps a lot to do everything faster. So now the question, why do we have a video editing PC? So first of all, because Alienware was so kind to really give me that one PC. So I just really had one I could dedicate to gaming. I put every single game from my video editing PC, I put every unnecessary software out there. You know that the PC only has like everything is freed, everything is done. There are no background programs running from everything else. It's just video editing. Also the same for the gaming PC. There's no background program, nothing unnecessary. There, there's like you know if you have on your PC all those programs because you kind of you kind of have to run this and that and then there's like something for something that doesn't have to do anything with gaming. I split that all on three PCs now, so there's like nothing terrible, like it, nothing is kind of impacting the poor performance of what the PC is currently able or should be able to do. Uh, same goes with the streaming PC, there's only streaming on there, nothing else. There's no Discord on there, there's no Skype on there. There's like nothing on that PC because nothing is, is needed to be on that PC, you know? So that's like where the video PC goes. Also 16 gigabyte of RAM and SSD, actually a really big SSD because video editing goes way faster when it's going through an SSD. I kind of feel like that because when I started like a rendering while everything was an SSD, the data seemed just to flow like, you know, magic. So that was kind of some great new update there. So there's actually a 500 gigabyte SSD in the editing PC. And that thing is just like fast as fuck when it comes down to just the editing part. You also saw my sound equipment. That is a Mackie 12 V2, which is like the Pro FX edition that can do sound effects. Like you can do some, like you have actually 10 or 12 different presets you can play around with. Currently, I'm not using them because it like kind of stands there where it does on the Hillware PC box because I don't have a proper stand for my audio equipment. Yes, this is actually awful. With a DBX S286, that's our preamp for the microphone. So I can add a bit, little bit more oomph. And I also have a compressor in there. So it's like a mechanical um, noise gate that like, you know, if I yell too loud, it compresses it down. Also there, like if I don't say anything that kind of filters those background noises completely out. And well, the soundboard is the key part of getting everything running because you have to put like the sound from the PC into the board. Then the board puts the PC into the streaming PC. Whereas also the soundboard takes the microphone and puts that in the streaming PC too. So you actually have like kind of all your sounds gathered there. Then in the future, you could also add another sound card to the PC to get like one input from the soundboard into that sound card. And then you can have an OBS studio, another source where you could actually put, let's say from the, uh, from the rendering PC, you could get the sound and input that in the gaming PC. And, but like doing this, uh, you can actually have, um, you can, you can actually have that the th sound that then comes from the uh, gaming PC, from the rendering PC into the streaming PC, <laughs> runs over a separate sound source again, and you can even separate that better into multi-tracks so that your OBS recording uh, is not getting impacted by music and you can use everything for YouTube. Sounds a bit complicated, but the sound stuff is actually super easy. If you buy that stuff and set it up, it's just like really, uh, you go for sound in. Boom. Then you just put in those big, big uh, clings into the soundboard. And then again, you just put that into the USB. Done. It's, it's, it's way too simplistic compared to how I actually always imagine sound to be. W which is kind of like, you know, as soon as someone explained this to me, it was like... Oh, that's like Lego. That's Lego sound. You know, like building a PC is Lego for adults. 
Uh, it's sound equipment is more or less Lego too, because you get it once, it's safe, explanatory. I already upgraded my rig. The second time I didn't even need anyone like kind of helping me with that. And in the end, two key components still left. How do we get the picture and how do we actually control all three PCs on all four displays? Well, it's pretty simple. First of all, we're using a tool called Synergy. Costs like five euros or so, nothing important and nothing expensive. And that tool allows me to control all three PCs with one mouse and keyboard over network without any problem. And that's just nuts because always like having a second mouse, second keyboard, you're like, oh, I might be using the wrong one. I might be using the right one. Sometimes you just swap it around. I did that before. Now I just control everything with one setting. Brilliant. I kind of love that and it makes everything so simple and so easy. Also, what we need is a capture card with two inputs because from camera and computer or two capture cards. I'm currently having an Avia Media uh, LGP portable and I have a Razer Ripsaw. Both are just there for taking the picture from PC to streaming PC and taking the picture from camera to PC too. Because with the Sony Alpha 5000 Form 100 we're using here, um, you have to have like a capture card because you can't just input your HDMI signal into the PC. Uh, like that doesn't work with a the camera. There's no live view. Also, this is like the best way you can actually get some quality running. If you rather want to have a capture card in your PC, that's also okay. Because you have PCI Express, there's also some good speed uh, to be reached. I'm using the USB capture cards. They work well. They're portable. I can take them with me to events. Did that at DreamHack Leipzig. Worked out super good. And I have to say it was like really um, something nice to be able to take your camera as we did here and have some 60 FPS, 1080p camera footage. Especially when you like want to show people the event and you're like, hey guys, you know, wow, this is actually cool, cool camera. And it was like so easy to take with me. But you know, if you then have a capture card in your computer and you have to get that and then bolt that in another PC, eh, that is not happening, right? That is pretty much how my whole setup works. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Ask anything. I'll try to answer it as much as I can. Obviously, too many comments. Can't give a proper answer to everything. Um, but I can definitely say you, if you want to build, tell you. If you definitely, if you want to build your PC, buy the parts, assemble it. Find someone that helps you assemble it. I did my first PC assembling over Skype with someone while holding a camera in my computer. It took me four hours. PC was perfectly well built. And then afterwards, I built all the other PCs myself. So you can learn it. It's easy. like if I can learn it, you can learn it too. And I have two left hands, you know? I, I tend to break things. I broke a motherboard once. It was really stupid. And they didn't want to take it back. And I was a kid and didn't have the money. I cried and I was sad. That was like 15 years ago. Why did my parents even give me, like, parents? Why did they trust me? I told them I can do it. They trusted me. Idiots. <laughs> So yeah, definitely build it yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. That is the setup I'm running. It's kind of almost the dream setup. I'm missing like one or two small things to kind of make it perfect. We'll get them over time. Uh, like last thing would probably be like a sixth monitor. So I can actually have a second monitor for my streaming PC. Unnecessary, but good in the end. But so far, I am definitely happy with what I have. I wish you all a wonderful evening. Watch the other vlogs, guys. Watch some more content here on the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you liked the video. Tried something new, added a bit sound, some new editing skills. I don't know. I hope I'm getting better with vlogging. Uh, and you all like to see this apart from like gaming content. Because as I said, 2017 content year. Binding the people more to me as a person year. And not only to my gaming capabilities. So I hope you like that. To have some behind the scenes insight. Love to have you here. Happy you hopefully enjoy it. And see you soon again on live stream here on YouTube, wherever you want.